Disney Plus has pretty much every Disney movie ever made, which means that there are a ton of movies on here that no one has ever heard of before. Why is there so much stuff on here? So I'm going through it all and choosing a random movie that's only included because it's a Disney movie and just clutters the site. This is The Clutter of Disney Plus. Hello everyone and welcome to the Movie Fanatics. My name is Brennick and welcome to episode one of The Clutter of Disney Plus, the series where I... you saw the intro. So for this first episode, I'm covering Alexander's Bad Day. Alexander's Terrible Awful Day. Alexander and the No Good Bad Day. What is this crap? Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Who named this? By the way, this movie is not yet on Disney+, Plus, but it is a Disney movie, so we can ignore that. I think we should start with a plot synopsis. I put plot in air quotes because this movie is just kind of funny scenes that are somewhat linked together. Also, this is a spoiler warning. If you care about spoilers for Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. So the plot kicks off with Alexander, a 12 year old boy, having a mildly infuriating day at school while the rest of his family had a good day. I was a little shocked when this happened because the day was almost over. Like Alex was coming home from school and nothing had happened that bad. It definitely wasn't bad enough to merit four adjectives. But it turns out the real bad day is the next one, which also happens to be his birthday. So at midnight, he makes a birthday wish that his family will have a really bad day tomorrow, just so they know how it feels. It's unclear if his wish actually causes the bad day or not. It's brought up later in the movie, but the family is just kind of like, no moron, you didn't cause this. Also, it's notable that in the scene before this, Alex thinks he's having a heart to heart with his brother. And this goes on for a while until the brother says that Alex has a cute butt and it's revealed that he's actually on the phone with his girlfriend. So the brother calls Alex an idiot and the girlfriend immediately hangs up because she thought the insult was directed at her even though it clearly wasn't. Also, she's a jerk. And then the brother gets mad at Alex and I guess that was just the straw that broke the camel's back because then he goes and makes the birthday wish. It might be a good time to explain that the next day is just the most important day ever for everyone else in the family. So the older sister has a play the next day and she wakes up sick. The older brother has prom and he gets an enormous zit and his girlfriend is mad at him. The dad, who's played by Steve Carell, yeah, he's in this movie. He has a job interview with some game developers and Donald Glover, wow. The mom is having a book read by Dick Van Dyke. How many big names are in this movie? And the baby is going to daycare or something. It doesn't matter. He's just there because he's a baby. So Alex's wish, or a coincidence, has already taken effect on two of the family members. But don't worry, because this movie is about to be a bunch of scenes of things going wrong. So everyone is dropped off at school and everywhere else they need to go. I don't really remember in what order these scenes happen, but it doesn't really matter. The brother gets back together with the girlfriend, and he gets so excited after this that he decides to destroy school property like the madman that he is. Please, be my date for the prom. This isn't Gossip Girl, you two. Get back inside, Celia. See you tonight. Yes! He's suspended. So then the sister sucks at singing because she's sick, and so Steve Carell has to take her and the brother home. Steve Carell takes the baby with him to the job interview, and when he's not looking, the baby eats a highlighter. Does he call poison control? <laughs> no. The baby just has a green mouth and face for the rest of the movie. So he has to reschedule the interview because he has to go leave and pick up his suspended kid. Also during all this, Dick Van Dyke is reading the mom's book, and it has a misprint, and he is just appalled. The book is about jumping or something, but it has a misprint that replaces the word jump with dump. Hilarity ensues. And Dick is so furious that the mom has to go hide in the ladies' room and then sneak out of the building. Also, during all of this, Alex is just kind of doing his own thing. I honestly can't remember any scene of him on his own, though. So the next major thing that happens is that the brother has a driving test, but during it, his girlfriend calls his cell phone. 
and he doesn't answer it because he's driving. But then the instructor goes, hey, aren't you going to answer it? And he's like, no, I'm driving. And the instructor's like, yeah, but it's important. Who's calling? And the brother's like, my girlfriend's probably about the prom. And the instructor's like, oh, then that's important. Answer it. And he's like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. So he answers it. So after he answers it, the instructor starts screeching at him to put the phone down when he's driving, and he's so shocked and surprised that he loses control of the minivan and just starts crashing into things, eventually stopping when he hits a tree. And the van is just dead. Uh, windows are broken, and two of the doors are like completely sheared off. They're gone. Oh, he failed. So the family is at a pharmacy waiting to get picked up by the brother in the minivan, and during all of this, the sister has been guzzling cough syrup because she's so desperate to be well by the play that night. And I mean guzzling, like straight out of the bottle like she's drinking a water. The brother pulls up in the wrecked minivan and they're all sad. Their day has been awful and they're about ready to give up. Alex tells him that this is his fault because of his birthday wish and they all just kind of tell him that he's wrong like I talked about earlier. And then they have this weird like cliche motivational conversation led by Alex where they're like, we're not gonna let this day get us down. One, two, three, team! It seems like this is the part of the movie where all the bad stuff happens because they're now learning to overcome it. But no, things just go bad after this too. So after that, they go to the sister's play. And I'm sure she's well by now. After all, she's been drinking so much cough syrup. So they all sit down to watch it. And in the first scene, the sister is on top of a set piece that she's not supposed to be on in a scene that she's not supposed to be in. Just kind of singing randomly. So she's had a little bit too much cough syrup and is now drunk slash high. This is so weird. Um, she destroys the set and ruins the play. And yeah, after it all, she vomits on Steve Carell. And I was about to turn the movie off because if his shirt had vomit on it for the rest of the movie, I, I just can't do that. But luckily, he just kind of steals a costume shirt and just leaves. So now this is like the climax. Steve Carell has his rescheduled job interview with the gamer guys. And then the brother and the girlfriend are on their date for the prom and the family is there because so the girlfriend is really annoyed about being picked up in a broken van and it's really windy due to the lack of doors and plus the family is just kind of being loud and rowdy at one point during the car ride Alex says to the girlfriend you look nice and she just kind of goes I know and it's not even a joke like oh, yeah I always look good it's like weirdly serious and she like rolls her eyes when she says it I hate her by the way, the couple is having dinner at the same restaurant where Steve is having his interview. And the family is there, again, just because. The rest of the family, including the brother, go outside to comfort Steve Carell because I guess he's really embarrassed after being on fire. And I kid you not, they have pretty much the exact same cliche motivational conversation with each other about not letting the bad day get them down. Again. Now hear me out on this. This actually happens in the movie. Steve Carell gets his stolen shirt lit on fire and then he puts himself out by dipping his head and upper torso into a lobster tank. At this point, the girlfriend is about to leave with her friends for the prom with the brother, but then the brother says that he's spending the day with his family and the girlfriend is so mad, but we never see her ever again, so that's fine. So the family goes home, opens their front door, and I kid you not, there is a crocodile there waiting for them with its mouth open, roaring at them. No, I'm not joking. So it turns out the parents had hired an Australian petting zoo for Alex's birthday, and the people in charge of it were just like, yeah, we had no idea where to put the alligators, so we just kind of put them in your pool. But then he went missing, and turns out he was in your house the whole time. Keep in mind that these guys don't get fired for, first of all, putting a crocodile in a swimming pool, and second of all, not going to go find it when they realize it's missing. So they put the crocodile in an actual pen, which they had the whole time, and then a kangaroo gets out, and so Steve Carell goes and chases it, and he gets kicked in the stomach by it. And I'm serious, kangaroos don't mess around. Those kicks can break ribs, but Steve Carell's okay. The kangaroo gets caught, and all the kids show up for Alex's party, and then there's a huge dance party at the end. So that was Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. And overall, I don't hate it. It has a lot of good actors in it, notably Steve Carell. He's great as always. And it actually is funny a lot of the time, intentionally or not. It's entertaining, as dumb as that sounds. 
And it does have a little bit of that hashtag YOLO dialogue. You know what I'm talking about. Dialogue that's supposed to sound like what the kids talk like. At one point in the movie, the brother goes hashtag blessed when he's talking about how great his day was in the earlier parts of the movie. So there's that. I feel like you guys already have a good enough idea of my thoughts on this movie based on the commentary alone. I like it overall, but it's not life-changing or anything. I think it works well as just a fun family comedy slash kids movie. It's nothing special, but it's pretty alright. So I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. And introducing the official Clutter of Disney Plus ranking whiteboard. The official whiteboard where I rank every movie I've reviewed in the series. So far this movie is at number one. That might change when we have an episode two, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more from the series. I'm excited to do more if you guys like it. Um, stay tuned for me and Brayden reviewing Indiana Jones, all of the movies. They're unscripted, we do them together. Um, the Last Crusade review should be coming out later this week, so give it a watch if you feel like it. <laughs> like and subscribe if you can remember the title of this movie, and if you can't, like and subscribe. This has been a harder video to make, and I haven't even started editing yet, so I'm going to get out of here. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Brannick from the Movie Fanatics, signing off. So that was Alexander and the Horrible, Terrible, No Good, Very... That's not right. So that was Alexander and the... So that was Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, Very Bad... Frick. Come on now. So that was Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. What's the rest of the line? <laughs> okay. So that was Alexander and the Horrible, Ter- No! Come on now! Who na It's notable that they made the kid's name Alexander. Like, it's- that's like the longest name possible. Along with the longest title. Okay. Just- we'll cut all that out.